our help is in the name of the Lord. If your word kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call of our name, servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro for this day is printed in your worship folder, Psalm chapter 50, verses 1 through 6. Congregational tune is, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Almighty God the Lord speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of thy in the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a consuming flame and around him a raging storm. He calls heaven and earth as witnesses to see him judge his people. Gather before me all my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. page 204 with our Kyrie, for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. And finally, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Let us pray. God of grace and glory, before your Son turned his face to Jerusalem and Mount Calvary, on another mountain you revealed his glory. Sustain your church both by his glory and also by your grace, and help us to reflect the glory of your love to all. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the Transfiguration of our Lord comes from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your, take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep it quiet. Elijah said to him, Elijah, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. When Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And so they still went on and talked. Behold, chariots of fire, horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by whirlwind into heaven, and Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson, also on the back of your worship folder, is from 2 Corinthians 3, verses 12 and 13, and also from chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. We're going to read those verses together, and then following the reading, we will rise and sing the Alleluia verse on page 205. We read, Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face, so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers 
to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please rise?
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Our text for this Transfiguration Sunday is going to be our Old Testament lesson. It's from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Dear friends of Christ, what is the hardest separation moment you have ever had? The death of a close friend or relative? A child that has gone to college or military or moved halfway across the United States for a new job? A mentor that left your workplace? A divorce you never saw coming? Oh, one that tears at my heartstrings were a few moments when the boys were little and I got called away for a death or a hospital call or even a meeting that I had to attend. To see them standing there at the door crying or with that disappointed look in their eyes gave this pastor an emotion that is difficult to comprehend. If you can relate to this story, then you know what it's like. I was fortunate, as I got older, or or as they got older, to take them with me, and the separation was lessened. Now in our gospel lesson for this morning, Christ is leading three of his inner circle to a mountain to prepare them for his death and resurrection. He is giving them hope in the transfiguration. And in another location across the Jordan River and many years earlier, despite the pain of separation from his master, Elijah, Elisha received a similar confidence via a spectacular display of God's presence. For our title today, I am going to use a line that I share with people, like the brothers and sisters at our former congregations, or relatives or friends that may not be seen for a while, if ever, here on earth. It fits our direction for this morning. If I don't see you in this life, I'll see you in the next. Now that line is used for people that are Christians. It is our great hope to see them again. But even for those of us who believe in God and His Word, separation is still a painful loss. Now Elijah is the one man in the Bible who didn't die. He was literally taken to heaven and separated from Elisha. And while Elisha knew this was going to happen, he still cried when it occurred. He mourned. It can be like that for us. When we watch a loved one creep toward death because of cancer or another lingering illness, we know the separation is inevitable But the end pounds the last nail in the coffin. Even in the midst of what we know, that separation is only temporary. And even Elisha knew that this was not a forever situation. Now Jesus' disciples would mourn his suffering and death. They grieve from a distance at his trial and crucifixion. The believing women are still in sorrow at Sunday's first light. And they are all weeping even though the Lord shared the final chapter of the story. He told them numerous times that on the third day he would rise again. Death's sting inflicts pain on us. We can't make that phone call or have that conversation we had in the past. 
We can't see the joy in their faith, in our accomplishments, or in their grandchildren's victories. We miss them at the dinner table, or next to us in the pew. And even though death is a result of our sin, we still can have tears flow for what seems like the silliest of reasons, even though we know that in Christ, it's only temporary. If I don't see you in this life, I'll see you in the next. God's divine plan brings comfort and hope. And Elijah knows the comfort of God's promises. He goes to his final destination knowing that his cross over to heaven brings a joyous end to his times of misery and despair. See, Elijah felt abandonment in life. And he had Jezebel who wanted to kill him. But this man of God was resuscitated by the Lord's angel and God showed him that he had not abandoned him. It is this quiet confidence in his destination that we see in our text. And Elisha follows confidently his master to the end. He knew the master had a plan. God revealed this truth in each stage of the journey. You see, God's glory, which we will experience someday, is on display this morning. The chariots and the horses of fire exclaiming, My Father, my Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. Our Lord's transfiguration elicits awe and this from Peter. Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And even our Lord's greatest manifestation of glory on the cross, which takes away the permanent sting of sin and death, caused at least one man to declare... Surely this was the Son of God. As a result of Christ's victory over sin and death and the devil, the company of heaven broke out in jubilant song. And when reunited with one another and in the visible presence of Almighty God day and night, They never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And one day we join that heavenly chorus. No tryouts needed. One day we celebrate the eternal reunion of all believers in Christ and with our loving and gracious God. And one day, the promise we hear in church and we read in our Bible will be our reality. Home at last. But until then, remember, if I don't see you in this world, I'll see you. In the next. Amen. Please rise for the prayer of the church. At the conclusion of each of the petitions, I will say the words, let us pray to the Lord. Will you please respond, Lord, have mercy. For the baptized, that we would heed our Heavenly Father's admonition to listen to His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As He speaks to us through His Holy Word and Sacraments, 
and that we would, by grace through faith, behold him in his glory as he continues to tabernacle among us, delivering forgiveness, life, and salvation through the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For parents in every Christian home, that they would pass on the faith to their children by word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who have been placed in authority over us, that they would serve with integrity and honor, having the welfare of all in mind. And for our country, that division, conflict, and strife would give way to unity, peace, and quietness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the Lord's flock here at Good Shepherd Luther Church, that we would be granted faithfulness, humility, and patience in our various vocations, striving to love God and neighbor in all that we say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who are sick, hospitalized, recovering, enduring ongoing treatment or suffering in any way, especially remembering Jack Gooding as we got word this morning that Jack is hospitalized, that they would know your peace and receive healing and relief according to your gracious will. And for all those who mourn, that they would be comforted by the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord On this Scout Sunday, we pray, Lord, that you would be with all the Scouts. We know the political upheaval they've gone through the last few years. But we thank you that young men can still be part of this group and learn important life lessons. Continue to bless their leaders and all the young men that are in scouting. Guide and watch over them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who come to the holy altar this day, to the holy communion of Christ's true body and blood, that receiving the forgiveness of sins, they would be strengthened in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Let us pray to the Lord. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. We will continue in our worship with the service of the sacrament of preface. That's at the top of page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples, that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection, and with all the faithful, look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. We have worked in peace. Amen.
Good morning, and uh, once again, welcome to uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. If you are a guest or visitor, we welcome you in the name of Christ. And uh, if you've not been here before, please sign our guest book, and we do invite you to uh, worship with us again. Uh, nice job, uh, Nick Hitch, this morning. This was his first time uh, being uh, the elder. And so you got not only sub-zero temperatures, but you got to talk about Elijah and Elisha. So, good job, Nick, and uh, thank you for your service, and also for our scouts this morning. Thanks for uh, helping out with everything as well. We do have a door offering for our seminary students, so uh, see that out in the narthex. Uh, that's Gunnar Campbell. He's a second-year student at uh, Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne. Uh, this week begins uh, Lent. Uh, there will be an email coming out either today or tomorrow with a few more details about all the services and the themes and everything. Uh, but this week, Ash Wednesday, service is at 7 o'clock, and that ends with Holy Communion. Also, please be aware, with uh, snow coming tonight and tomorrow, uh, more than likely uh, nobody will be in the office tomorrow, so I'm going to see what it's like to work at home like all of you have been doing. And uh, then the last thing I have for today is we do have Lenten devotions from Lutheran Hour Ministry. But let me explain this. First of all, I'd like to thank Mrs. Tony Louie, who I know well. She's part of the Evangelism Stewardship Group. And she ran these off for us, and she followed the directions Lutheran Hour Ministries gave. But we've given you a little puzzle. So these are uh, clipped together. And when you do them this way, they're in order. You'll have the right uh, date. But then when you get to the end here, you've got to flip them over, and they're not exactly in the order they need to be. So uh, once you figure that out, uh, bring them back to church, and we'll have a little prize. So, not really. <laughs> bring, them back, bring them back anyway, and you can show us that you did it. So... Uh, does anyone have any questions about that? So uh, thank you, Tone, for putting those together. And uh, they are back on the table in the narthex. So, Herb, are you surprised? Yes. I know. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, Sandy is not in our office working, so uh, thank you to Tony for uh, putting this together. Does anyone have anything else? All right. By next weekend, we may be at uh, 30 degrees, so God bless. <laughs>